So welcome to uh, this edition of uh, Decoding Diplomacy, Professor Anil Suklal. Uh, Professor Suklal is ambassador at large for Asia and BRICS in Department of International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa. He serves as South Africa's BRICS Sherpa, Sherpa for IPSA and IORA, Indian Ocean Rim Association. He previously served as South Africa's G20 Sherpa and is ambassador to the European Union, Belgium and Luxembourg. Uh, Professor Suklal, uh, uh, welcome to uh, this our studio. And uh, this edition of uh, Decoding Diplomacy will be focusing on BRICS, the BRICS summit South Africa is hosting. This is probably the biggest BRICS summit in terms of the large number of world leaders uh, who have been invited. I believe uh, uh, more than around 70 plus leaders have been invited by the South African government and uh, more than 40 are reportedly attending. Uh, this is also the first uh, in-person BRICS summit after a COVID hiatus of three years. So the world will be watching uh, this edition of the BRICS summit in Johannesburg very closely and what South Africa is trying to achieve and the relevance of BRICS as well. Uh, so my first question to you is, uh, Professor Suklal, that uh, how is South Africa trying to uh, position the summit and its presidency's chairmanship of BRICS. What are the major outcomes uh, South Africa would be aiming at at the forthcoming BRICS summit in Johannesburg from August 22 to August 24? Uh, thank you, Manish, uh, for having me on your program. It's indeed my privilege and also to be sharing views on South Africa's chairship of, of BRICS. Well, yes, we are just less than two weeks away from the BRICS summit, and it's the first in-person summit after over three years when we could not meet because of the pandemic. Now, South Africa has chosen for its theme uh, a focus on partnership with Africa. Has This has been always uh, our focus whenever we have the opportunity to chair BRICS. So... Our theme is uh, BRICS and Africa, Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable Development, and Inclusive Multilateralism. So if you unpack uh, our theme, it has four major focus areas. Firstly, using the chairship of South Africa to enhance and deepen partnership between BRICS and Africa. Mm -hmm. Secondly, addressing the global economic recovery. Uh, firstly, as a collective to see what we can do in terms of stimulating growth amongst ourselves. And of course, thirdly, looking at the sustainable development agenda, which has fallen well behind schedule because of the pandemic and the conflict. And fourthly, a standing agenda item of BRICS is reform of the global governance architecture and therefore inclusive multilateralism. Mm. So these are the key focus areas for us. Now, in terms of tangibles, uh, we will be looking at uh, enhancing the partnership with Africa through various activities, one of which is we will have a focused attention on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement mm -hmm. and how BRICS can interact with the AFCTA in terms of advancing uh, the goals of the AFCTA for mutual benefit for the BRICS countries and the African continent. I think it provides us a tremendous opportunity because mm -hmm. all of the BRICS countries have very dedicated programs with, mm -hmm. with uh, Africa. You have the uh, India-Africa Forum Summit, uh, and I believe next year there'll be another edition of that, uh, which is in a well-established platform that uh, looks at deepening Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between India and the African continent. Likewise, you have FOCAC with China. You also have the Latin America Africa uh, Forum with, with uh, Brazil being a key player there. And just two weeks ago in uh, St. Petersburg, we had the second edition of the Russia Africa Forum. And I think uh, having the opportunity to have a coordinated approach in terms of BRICS partners 
and interacting with Africa and using the template of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is an important opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as you mentioned, we have invited a large number of countries to the Friends of of BRICS meeting that will take place a day after the summit on the 24th of August. Mm -hmm. President Ramaphosa has invited all of the African countries. So you will ha have an opportunity for the BRICS leaders to interact with African leaders, uh, both bilaterally and as a collective within the BRICS. I know that India is planning also a side meeting with the, the leaders of Africa, using the opportunity to, to reflect on the partnership. Uh, we also, at the Women's Business Alliance uh, of, of the BRICS, uh, is going to also launch the virtual uh, BRICS Africa Women's Business Alliance platform to facilitate uh, business mm -hmm. between Africa and the BRICS, BRICS countries, especially concentrating on women entrepreneurs and the SMME sector. So I think that's also a very tangible outcome. We're also looking at uh, launching the BRICS uh, Africa Center for Industrial Competencies with uh, UNIDO being a partner to us. As you know, industrialization is a major focus mm -hmm. for, for the African continent and for the global south, I would say. And having such a facility will also uh, enhance cooperation between Africa and BRICS countries in terms of our industrialization agenda. These are some of the very tangible uh, initiatives that that we have on the table we are also looking at setting up a BRICS Africa just energy transitions uh, facility mm -hmm. uh, where we can work together with Africa and BRICS countries in looking at our energy needs especially transiting to to clean energy as well as ensuring that it's a just transition mm -hmm. and sharing experiences on how this happens without uh, negatively impacting our economic growth so that's uh, from what you say. It's a fairly, it's, it's actually a very transformative and substantive agenda, uh, focused on Africa and the global South. I think those are the two major priorities of uh, South Africa chairship of BRICS. Now coming to an issue which has dominated the headlines uh, recently and for quite some time now, uh, is the issue of the expansion of BRICS. Uh, now, what we are hearing, we are hearing different versions, uh, but uh, uh, talking to people here, I, uh, you know, in our own government and otherwise, I get the sense that we are going ahead. The BRICS finally has decided to take a call and probably this will be announced at the summit. Uh, specific candidacies are still a matter of discussion. So, I mean, what is South Africa's view? Uh, my questions are twofold. Number one, where does this process in terms of debate, consultation, the uh, expansion process stand? Would we expect, can we expect a formal announcement by the leaders or in the joint declaration? What is the way ahead for expansion? Yes. Uh, well, Manish, you know that expansion has been very much part of the uh, BRICS agenda since the summit last year under China's chairship, where the leaders specifically in the declaration, paragraph 73, indicated that we should start discussions around expansion, we should develop uh, guiding principles, standard criteria and procedure for expansion through the Shepherd track. Now, since we took over the chairship in January, we've had several uh, meetings at the level of Shepherd and Sue Shepa to uh, deliver on that mandate. Uh, I can say that we have uh, by and large completed our work at the Sherpa level in terms of those four areas, the guiding mm -hmm. principle, standard criteria and procedure. Now, of course, as you know, it's very much in the public domain that some 23 countries have formally approached right. uh, BRICS member state to become full members of BRICS. Right. So there's a high level of interest from the global south and a large number of countries have informally also approached us about becoming members. Now, the foreign ministers, uh, when they met in Cape Town on the 1st and 2nd of June, reflected on this and they asked the Sherpas to finalize their recommendations. Now, we had a virtual meeting of foreign ministers about three weeks ago where they had a further discussion, but it's ongoing work. The foreign ministers are scheduled to meet prior to the summit to finalize recommendations to uh, the leaders. 
So there will definitely be a pronouncement on expansion. But at this stage, it's quite uh, early to, to say what that pronouncement will mean. Mm -hmm. We have been discussing the issue of expansion at the level of, of permanent members and the level of partner countries. Uh, this is all still under discussion at the moment. But uh, definitely, as per the declaration of last year, leaders uh, tasked us, to look at expansion, so definitely leaders will pronounce on expansion. Right. Uh, now, there, there is, uh, you know, also the debate about uh, Sherpas were instructed, mandated uh, to evolve some criteria for expansion. Uh, from what I know, there are some differences. Uh, maybe one or two countries, BRICS permanent countries, uh, feel that uh, we should take everybody along. And uh, India, for one, is insisting on criteria. I believe South Africa shares the same approach. Is there a unanimity on the consensus? Uh, sorry, is there a consensus on criteria uh, for the expansion of BRICS, or is it evolving? What What do we know at this moment? Well, I must say that we're very close to consensus, but we're not there yet. We've had several meetings. We have. We will have a further consultation next week as Sherpas to try and finalize. Uh, these four areas of, of guiding principle, criteria and standards mm -hmm. and procedure, because it's important we have that in place. Then only can we look at the issue of, of expansion. And I think we almost, I'd say 95% agreed on, on these areas, but uh, we still have a bit more work to do. And hopefully when the shepherds are together next week in, in Johannesburg, we can finalize that a document and, and then make firm proposals to the ministers. Right. Uh, yeah, when is this uh, Sherpa meeting exactly? And uh, is we it start, a virtual we start or on this, We start on the 17th of August. Uh, our will Sherpa. it be virtual or it will be? No, no, uh, it's, it's in uh, physical, format. physical format. We will be meeting from the 17th of August onwards uh, until we finalize uh, all issues. All right. That are tasked for the Sherpas. Uh, Professor Sukla, there is also a bit of you know what gets reported. Probably people are fascinated or like to give that spin of China trying to manipulate uh, the expansion to to promote its uh, own agenda. Some say that China is even trying to create a parallel G20 or trying to get friendly countries in which will be loyal to Beijing. What about the geopolitical contestation? Do you think it will affect BRICS solidarity, the future of BRICS, coherence of BRICS? Well, look, let me say, Manish, over the past 15 years that BRICS has been now meeting in summit, uh, culminating with the 15th summit year in, in, in Johannesburg, BRICS has worked as a consensus-based organization. We have respected uh, the sovereignty and independence of each country's uh, foreign policy views and whatever worldviews they may have. We have not imposed our views on each other. And the way that the BRICS uh, architecture is structured, it's mm -hmm. impossible for one country mm -hmm. to hold sway over the others. Mm -hmm. we, are, we jealously guard our positions as independent countries. And if there's no consensus, mm -hmm. no issue, no issue in pass. And it's worked very well thus far. So it will be very difficult for one country to impose its position on the four others. It has not worked for 15 years. And I can assure you, I've been part of this BRICS for the past 12 years. It will not work. And definitely South Africa will not agree to such a situation. You know, you can see that when we created the New Development Bank, mm -hmm. some countries wanted to put more capital because they have much more. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, mm -hmm. all of us will put in the same percentage of capital to create the NDB so that no one country can say we have put in more capital, we've got more power. Right. And the NDB continues to work as an effective bank and has established it itself on the global platform precisely because all of us have equal shareholding and an equal say on how this bank is conducted. So we have a template that works very well, not only in the bank, but for the past 15 years, the BRICS architecture has worked on the basis of consensus and we will not sacrifice that. So uh, principles of equity and balance would also shape expansion of BRICS. This is what you are probably saying. Definitely. 
yeah, yeah. definitely. It has to be very much part of the equation. Uh, and I think as the global south, it's important that we maintain that because if we don't have equity and balance, inclusiveness and representation, then we are going to create a structure that replicates the fault line that exists in the current global structure that right. we're trying to address. We can't create a structure that, uh, that has these fault lines uh, right. that we are trying to address. Uh, another issue, which is it's a slightly contentious issue, but that's uh, uh, you know generating a lot of discussion, is the issue of currency. You know that uh, there are there are uh, I believe proposals about a brief common currency, uh, and of course I think by and large the unanimity that we should be trading more in rich currencies, internationalization, but creating an alternative to the to the omnipotence of dollar, if I can put it that way, uh, you know, de-dollarization, some call it. Uh, I don't know. What, what is your take on this issue? What can well, we let me be very let me be very clear. Mm -hmm. The issue of a BRICS currency is not on the agenda under South Africa's session. But what we are saying is we must deepen the agreement we have that we have signed. Uh, amongst our banks, the interbank mechanism to trade in local currencies. So the focus is how do we deepen our interaction using local currencies? Now, the NDB, for example, in its new five-year plan 21 uh, to 25, has stipulated that at least 30% of borrowing will be in local currencies. So they have already set a template. Mm -hmm. Now, amongst BRICS countries, we are saying we need to deepen not only trade, but payment settlement in terms of local currencies. And I think that's the first step. We shouldn't uh, proceed in haste. We are not anti-dollar, but what we are saying, we want greater financial independence and flexibility mm -hmm. in the way we conduct our economic interaction with the global community. And that is why you are seeing that, for example, India has signed with over 22 countries mm -hmm. to de deal in the rupee. In Africa, as part of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the Afri-Exim Bank, has put in place the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System mm -hmm. and eight central banks and over 20 commercial banks have signed up to this mm -hmm. because Africa is saying that we must be able to trade in our own currency between ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it is estimated that as a result of this, trading in local currencies within the African continent will save us at least $5 billion annually. Mm -hmm. So this is a major movement that BRICS has initiated and right. it has gone beyond BRICS mm -hmm. where we need to deepen our trade, our interaction, our payment settlement system in our own currencies, moving away, as you said, mm -hmm. from the dollar denomina uh, denominated world, dom dollar dominated world, because the dollar at one stage accounted for 50, 60 percent of global trade. But the dollar, the USA's trade share today is much less. But yet the the major part of global invoicing for trade, over 50% is still in dollars. Mm -hmm. And we are saying that we need to trade amongst ourselves in our local currencies. We need to be able to borrow in local currencies. We need to make payment settlements in systems that we have created. We need to move away from the dominance of the SWIFT system and create our own systems. And you are seeing this as a global trend throughout the global south, which BRICS has initiated. Right. So what we're talking about is not an anti-West, but a non-West, a non-West payment mechanism, alternative payment mechanism that suits the interests of British countries in the larger global South. Coming to this part about global South is also South Africa has put that on the, on the majorly on the BRICS agenda. And here there is a, there is a, a symmetry. There is a convergence between uh, South Africa BRICS agenda as an India G20 uh, presidency agenda, where is the yes. global yes. south? Now, my larger question to you is this, uh, that uh, in what is BRICS approach, unique, singular approach to the global south, which you would like to be carried forward into India G20 presidency? Uh, and uh, how is the developed world reacting? I mean, what is your sense? Well, I think... Uh... BRICS engagement to the Global South is now a decade old because the first outreach we had was when we chaired in 2013 and we invited African leaders to dialogue with BRICS. And subsequently, we created the BRICS Plus, 
where we have invited from the larger global south and not just from the region of the country, mm. Cherry. And mm. we have cascaded that to beyond uh, the level of leaders. We're even foreign ministers now. This year, we had 15 global south uh, foreign ministers invited to the BRICS foreign ministers meeting. I think there is a genuine confidence in the BRICS leadership and what we are championing in terms of addressing the major flaws that exist in the current geopolitical, financial, economic trading architecture. And that is why you are seeing such a large number of countries from the global south wanting to be associated with BRICS, wanting to be invited to the meetings, wanting to become full members. And I think because the global south has risen and countries like India has, has been party to this, that has given all of us a new confidence that as countries of the South, we're no longer poor. We're not saying that we are rich, but we are no longer poor that can be dictated to in terms of how we conduct our interaction with the global community. And this is why you are seeing the rise of the global South, because many of the global South countries today, their economies are much bigger than your global North economies, much bigger than the G7 economies. India this year, overtook the UK to become the fifth largest global economy. China is the second largest. Brazil and, and Russia are within the top 10 of global economies. So the G7 are no longer the biggest economies in the world. BRICS countries also rank amongst the major economies in the world. And this warrants a new approach. And But the rise of emerging market developing countries has given a greater sense of confidence to the global south at large. And that is why you are seeing the reaction of the global south in terms of the behavior on the geopolitical front when the Russia-Ukraine crisis bro broke out and countries were being, say, being asked to say that you must side with us and take positions aligned to us in terms of the Russia-Ukraine war. We have said no, we are strategically non-aligned. We want to uh, ensure our independence. We don't want this war, as uh, Foreign Minister, Minister of External Affairs, Dr. Jay Shankar pointed out. This is Europe's war. It's not our war. It's mm -hmm. been imposed on us, and right. the pain and suffering is being is being felt by Africa, by the developing South, caused by a conflict in Europe. And what is tr what is unique also is that Europe always come to Africa to try and solve our problems. But today you have African leaders going and offering uh, assistance to try and find a solution to the war in, in Europe. And that shows how the world has changed, that where Africa can go and tell Europe, we can assist you to bring peace. Right. Uh, other thing is that Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, would be visiting South Africa uh, for the BRICS summit. There was some speculation about it virtual, but now that's history that's behind. Uh, my question to you is that apart from attending the BRICS summit, you will be meeting uh, South Africa's president, uh, uh, Pre President Ramaphosa, and then it will be his turn to come to India. So the, the next few weeks will see intensified interaction between the two leaders. What is happening on the India-South Africa track? Is there anything significant that you can think of, uh, you know, which is going to prove well, Yeah. This is a very significant year uh -huh. for India-South Africa relations. I mean, we, sh we have a shared history uh, that date back long before we established diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. But this year marks 30 years of formal diplomatic relations between South Africa and India. And I think that's a major milestone. It's also 130 years of the return of Gandhi from, from South Africa. And that's also another major event. So on various fronts, we, and India is uh, president of the G20. We are chairing BRICS. So there are, on various fronts, there are synergies uh, between India and South Africa. We are playing a pivotal role this year on the global scene as chair of BRICS, as chair of G20. And India has been doing a remarkable job. And uh, we are also thankful for the major focus that India has brought to the global south and the African continent during its chairship. And I think that... That is one of the unique contributions, and that's one of the points of synergy uh, where we can use Prime Minister Modi's visit to South Africa to not only look at deepening the historical relationship. We are major trading partners. We are major investors. Uh, India is, has been 
historically uh, at the forefront of supporting South Africa as we move towards 30 years of democracy and celebrating 30 years of this diplomatic relations. Uh, we have major milestones that we have achieved uh, pre uh, our democracy and during the period of democracy. So I'm sure that uh, both the leaders will look at uh, further uh, areas of cooperation to deepen the relationship because the scope for greater cooperation between India and China on all, sorry, India and uh, South Africa on all fronts is vast. And mm -hmm. I still think our relationship is at the infancy. It will continue to grow very significantly. Right. Uh, Professor Suklan, very briefly, you know, one of the uh, major areas where we have a convergence, India and South Africa, especially in BRICS and multilateral fora, is the reform, democratization of the international order, uh, reform and expansion of the UN Security Council. But, you know, BRICS formulation, that is, I'm talking about joint formulation or UNSC, has remained frozen over the last 15 years. Yep. Russia and China Absolutely. have not come out overtly in support of uh, the candidacies of India, Brazil and South Africa. I believe uh, also talking about one of the criteria for expansion is also looked at is support of the new countries for this process. What is your take on this? Well, look for South Africa, like India and Brazil, UNSC reform is non-negotiable. For us, especially the fact that after almost 80 years since the formation of the United Nations, to have Africa, a continent of 55 countries, 1.4 billion people, not in a security council, it's a shame. It's a shame and a major indictment to all the P5 members. And we say this very openly to our BRICS partners that they have to champion the reform of the Security Council and support uh, the, the, the desire of the African continent to have permanent representation in a reformed, expanded Security Council. <clears throat> it's, it's something that South Africa supports firmly and we will not waver on this. We will constantly raise it, not only in the BRICS plat platform, but internationally. Uh, <clears throat> all right. uh, on that note, uh, we will uh, conclude this conversation. Uh, very transformative, very transformational agenda which South Africa is pursuing under chairmanship, its own chairship of BRICS and uh, the synergies between India and South Africa in the international arena is uh, widening and it will be reflected in the, the, the successful summit which South Africa will be hosting. Uh, and, you know, uh, we are very fortunate and very privileged to have you for this conversation because you are probably one of the very few diplomats in the last who have consistently who have been a part of the BRICS process. So nobody is more equipped or better equipped to give a, that kind of insight into to, to the BRICS process and South Africa presidency of BRICS. Thank you so much for finding time to join in. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Manish. Thank you for having me.